councils from the year 325 all the way to 787, you know, until the 8th century. And even today, many, you know, like the lady she was saying, to believe in the truth in the Oriental, Eastern Oriental Church, yes? So she is now of a different denomination to you, to your church. And that's the reason I told you that there are many churches teaching many things, and they all claim that they have the truth. But you see, like I said, judge a religion based on the scripture. So when an Oriental comes, uh, or when an Eastern Orthodox comes, or when a Catholic comes, or a Protestant, I would ask them, show me in the Bible where anyone says to worship a triune being. Would this also account for all the confusion about religion these days? Absolutely. That's the reason you had so many different councils, so many different church. And if you look at the history of Christianity, there's always been conflict within the churches as to which church is right, yes? Who are the heretics? Who are the ones who have been excommunicated from the church? There's always been tension in, with regards to the belief in God, but they never go and point them back to the Bible, yes? Which is what they should have been doing. But even the Bible itself had its own, has, its, has its own history. Like if I ask the Christians, show me anything from the first century, from the time of Jesus Christ, or even from the first hundred years, yes? Where did anyone have anything to do with the New Testament? There's not a single manuscript out there that shows this. No, yeah. So how would you base your claims based even on the Bible? Yes? You see what I mean? These are the kind of questions that should be popping up in your head as someone who is, who's got, uh, who's open-minded and looks and seeks the truth. Because we pray to Almighty to give you Hidayah, to give everyone Hidayah, including myself. Hidayah means to see, we seek guidance for God Almighty to show us the truth. Yes, and we leave it to the Almighty. So you see, if, if I was in your place, I would definitely be worshipping the God of Jesus, not Jesus. Are you with me? I'm with you. Yes. Yeah? So this is, this is, like I said, this is the Islamic understanding of God Almighty that He doesn't change. He doesn't become from Almighty to a man and then die by His own creation. This is something I, myself, personally, and many Muslims would consider to be blasphemous. Because how can God Almighty come down, be tortured, yes, and then put to death by the very people that He created? Yes? This is an eyebrow, doesn't it? It does indeed. So these are the quite kind of questions that you should be seeking. Like I said, if you're seeking the truth, then you should be open minded and you should be looking at the truth in different places. So have you ever read the Quran or had have you had a I don't know, a discussion with a Muslim before? Well, I've got to say <laughs> you're the first one I've actually spoken to properly. Yeah. And I, and I have to say, Where about are you from, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, from South East England. Okay. Yes. South East England. Okay. I'm sure there's, there's Muslims everywhere. It doesn't matter where you go. But, but, <laughs> but again, I must admit, I mean, yeah. I have spoken to a few of your, a few of the Islamic community right. whilst I've been doing outreach, and I have to say, you guys are very open. You're very honest. Yeah. And yes, you know. Yeah. I mean, look, like I said before, you know, our objective is to seek the truth and to propagate the truth. And by the way, these videos, they go on YouTube. So if we were lying or if we, if we were being dishonest, yes, people will know this, you know. They can fact check things nowadays in the age of information. Yes, it's something that is quite easy. And in the age of information, ignorance is something that shouldn't be allowed. Yes, <laughs> it shouldn't I, be allowed. I mean, ignorance yeah. and hypocrisy are two of the main things yeah. that are going on as well. Absolutely. And, but it's great to actually speak to a Muslim in terms of how open they are, as well as what logic they've got in their head. Yeah, absolutely. And, and really, it's an absolute pleasure to talk to you. No, likewise, it was a pleasure. You're, you're an open-minded person, a friendly person, and we always like to talk and discuss about our faiths, but in a friendly way. So we we benefit each other, you know what I mean? Yes. With the information, yes? And uh, like I said, I mean, in the age of information, ignorance is a choice. So we have, we don't have any excuse today. We can just go on the internet, look for things, but then that can not always be foolproof, you know, because you find lots of uh, misinformation as well. Just like the media wants to spread misinformation, there's a lot of misinformation about Islam and obviously about Christianity as well on the internet. So we go back to the source. What is the source of Christianity? The Bible. What is the source of the, uh, for Islam? The Quran and the Hadith. So we go back to the source and then we look at it and then we see, uh, we, we try to research, we try to study, and we find out a great deal from that. So what I'm saying is that, look, salvation, like you spoke at the very beginning, is something should be paramount for us in terms of our priorities, yes? Because 
we know that one day we all are going to die. Oh yes, I mean as the saying goes, as soon yeah. as you're born, you know you're yeah. going to die. Yeah. Regardless of your belief or disbelief, you're going to die. I don't think even the atheists would actually disagree with that. Absolutely not. Yes, so no one can disagree with this one fundamental truth, which everyone believes in, that death is imminent for the mortals. We all are mortal. Who is the only one who is immortal? God. God Almighty. Did Jesus die according to you? There you go. So even Jesus is not someone who is immortal. He also is subject to death. I would rather believe and worship someone who doesn't die. And what, that is the God of what Jesus. About, what about the Lord Jesus' resurrection? Yeah, so resurrection is not a Muslim. He's outside the fold of Islam. If he rejects Jesus Christ as being the Messiah and as being um, uh, a messenger and a prophet of God. So this is something which is fundamental for a Muslim to believe in. I had no idea that the Lord Jesus actually had a huge influence huge. on Islam. Huge, huge. And we do believe that he was born of the Virgin Mary. Yes, we do We do actually believe that he, he, he was the one who had many miracles. Yes, raising the dead back to life. Yes, he used to cure the blind, the lepers. All this thing is in the Quran actually. And in, the, in our belief, in, our, in the hadith as well. You see? Yes. So there's a lot of commonality. You know, we Muslims believe in all the prophets. We don't reject any true prophet. So we accept Jesus Christ. We accept Moses. We accept um, um, Abraham, Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, David, Jacob. Isaac, all of them. Yes, yeah. all of them. And we accept also Prophet Muhammad as the last and the final messenger who brought the final message, the Quran to us and you know we can we consider the Quran to be something which is um, the Muhammad or something that uh, that differentiate the falsehood from the truth yeah so we we accept that there are previous messengers and prophets like the ones I just mentioned and we also believe that these prophets uh, sorry these messengers were given books sacred books like the Injil which is which uh, has become kind of like uh, what the Christians believe in today. Yes, so the Injil was something that was given to Jesus Christ, whom we call Isa in Arabic. In the Quran, it's mentioned as Isa alayhi salam or Isa ibn Maryam. Isa, the son of Mary. So we don't say son of God, we say son of Mary. And that is the other difference you mentioned earlier about the son of God. We do not believe him to be the son of God. You see, in Christianity also, if you look in the Bible, there are many sons of God. For example, Adam is called the son of God with a definite article. Yes, David is called the son of God. Abraham is called the son of God. Yes, Israel, uh, or as he is known as uh, uh, Jacob. You know Jacob? Yeah. So there are many sons of God in the Bible. What does that mean? Because this is a phrase that was used by the Hebrew people. The Jewish people use this phrase, son of God, for those people who were righteous. So those people who were God-fearing, you know, those people who like, like the way you committed your life to Jesus Christ, they committed their life to Almighty God. Yes? So they were called sons of God. Yes? Like it says also in the Bible, you must have heard this. Um, it says, um, the peacekeepers are the children of God. Yes? And then uh, many places it says, be like a child. Because they belong to the kingdom of God. Yes? Why is that? Because the children are sin free. Yes? They're without sin. And... Jesus even says to be like children. That means be without sin. Try not to sin. Because the children don't. So be like them. And that is what we also believe as Muslims. Is that when you are born, you're born without any sin. You're born free of sins. Oh, whereas, whereas on the Christian side, yeah. we are born in sin. We are born through sin. Yeah. So therefore, in your case, you're born without sin. Whereas, okay. Oh. Yeah. So, what do you make of that? Yeah, have you, I don't know if you have actually thought about that because to me anyone who's born with a negative account yes well again I must it's no that, fault it, of his or hers is it I know but it was actually frightening at first to actually hear it mm. but you know what went through your mind just I don't know well, well, take me through well, let me see. through well, that journey of yours well let me see the first time I was actually doing um, an, out, an outreach yeah. and um, there was this little chap called Mark I mean he's a devotee of the Bible I mean he could literally read you whole scripture Sorry, who's that? The, the chap on the... Yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's David down there. But there's his name David? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, David. Yeah, I've spoken to him a few times. There's a little chap who comes from this. He's in his, uh, he's in his 80s now. His name's Mark. Okay. And um, he was the one that was taught 
but he was the one that actually taught me that we were born for a sin. I was like, how do you work that out? Yeah. And I think to myself, okay, so <laughs> I got the first impression was we're born for a sin. So in my mind, I thought, oh, we're going to hell. <laughs> that's, that's actually quite logical, if you ask me. Because obviously, if you're born through sin and you're a sinner since you're born, then automatically, if you're a sinner, you go to hell, isn't it? So how did you, I don't know, how did you overcome that illogical stance? It was, again, it was a bit of a journey. Yeah. Again, talking to my group leader, Dave, um, he taught me that if you actually apologize for just repent of sins, as it were, then, you, then the Lord will forgive you, God will forgive you. That's actually a good answer. You know, as Muslims, we believe that. But we do not believe a child from day one it's is born, born with a sin. Yeah. We believe they are born free of sin. They are born pure. It is their parents and the communities who then uh, take them through that, uh, I don't know, whatever sins they commit, or even their own self, actually. So you're ultimately responsible for your sins, but you have to obviously come to an age where you understand what is good and uh, uh, what is good and evil. See what I mean? And, and in the last 14 years, I have. Mm. I mean, I've realised what not to do, but also what to follow. Yeah. And that's why I'm still learning. Absolutely. Yeah. So you see, for me, someone who's with the sin from day one, I think that thought itself is just. I mean, the baby doesn't understand what is right and wrong. So if you, t if, you, if you shine a lighter in front of the, the child, the child will try to hold it. They don't even know what is danger, or what is right and what is wrong. How will they understand about sin? How will they understand about what is righteous? They want. And that is the reason in Islam we believe that until you age, sorry, until you reach the age of understanding, yes, which, which generally is the age of puberty, yes, only then you become accountable for your actions. And this is true in the case of the courts as well. You go to the court, you know, they have juvenile courts for yes, a reason. Yes. So the children are treated, even though they, they might have committed crimes and atrocities, they are treated in a different way uh, than to the adults. Because obviously they do understand that a child is not the same as an adult. Yes? Now the term child is obviously subjective again, because in some countries you might have a different Age. <laughs> yes, and again, yeah. um, saying that we are born through sin, but it's the parents that actually commit the sin. That's why, and that's how, why we are born through that sin. Yeah. And again, like you say, in Islam, you're born through purity. Yeah. We're not. We believe, we believe that if your parents have committed a sin, then that shouldn't be visited upon you. Because why would you be responsible for the sins of your parents? Same thing, why would they be responsible for the sins of their parents or your grandparents? See what I mean? Every individual is responsible for their own or accountable for their own sins. Just like when you go to the court, yes? If you're the one committed the crime, you're the one who has to do the time. Yeah? No one will say that you're guilty before even you step into the court or before you have even committed any crime. You see what I mean? Yeah, they always, right. yeah, similarly, we believe that God is just. He is not unjust. So if anyone advocates or teaches you that you are a sinner since you were a baby, then there's something fundamentally wrong with that particular teaching. And Alhamdulillah, you see, praise be to God, we don't believe that God is unjust. We believe that He is, he is the one who is the most just. And there's no one who is going to say or claim that He is unjust by making such statements that God created you. Because if you read the Old Testament, you know what it says in, in Ezekiel, in Ezekiel 18, 20, it says exactly what I just mentioned, that the father is not accountable for the sins of the son, and the son is not accountable for the sins of the father. And then it goes on to say that if someone who repents, even they be the wickedest of the wicked, God can forgive their sins. God has the ability to forgive their sin without any repentance, sorry, without any shedding of blood. But there has to be repentance. That means you should act, you should uh, proactively take the step to seek repentance and forgiveness from God Almighty. And that's the reason I'm saying that God is able to forgive. However, He is not going to forgive any animal's blood or any human blood. No. Yeah. 
that is the other, I think, doctrine which you probably have come across. A little bit, yes. Yeah. What do you make of that? Well, personally, personally, I think it's a little bit absurd. <laughs> That's fine. Sorry, carry on. So we talk about the doctrine of the, the, the indoctrination, as well as as well as how words again through propaganda media has become in terms of all religions. I mean, yours is blacklisted, mine is blacklisted, Catholicism is blacklisted, and we can't win. But don't you know what I say? Is, let's not worry about what people say about our faith. Let's look at the source, which we say is the one where we take our religion from. So like I said, go back to scripture, go back to the sacred books, the one we claim from God. You see what I mean? So regardless of what the world says, you know, during the time of Jesus Christ, during the time of, in fact, most of the prophets, they all had to face this oppression from their people because change didn't come easily. Yes. So when the Prophet Sallallahu yes, before he claimed that he was the prophet of God, yes, the people in his community used to say that you are the trustworthy one you are al amin yes the one who is trustworthy and they used to entrust uh, their belongings to him like you okay this is something valuable i have can you please take care of it while i go on travel or something so they used to trust him so much and he used to have this uh, what he said this title called al amin the one who is trustworthy as soon as he says when he got the revelation from god almighty and he says to them, the Quraysh, his own people, that God is only one. Yes. Every other God, yes, or alleged God, is false. As soon as he made that statement, because in his time, the, the Arabs, they were the pagans. They used to worship many gods. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> Sunny props. Yeah, that's fine. Jazakallah. Thank you, brother. Anyway, mate, just to get back to it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Even Judaism. So you know the Judaism they believe in the same prophets. We believe in the same prophets as well. Like all the way from Adam to the obviously they don't believe in Jesus Christ as a Messiah. They reject him. They do not believe in Prophet Muhammad, they reject him as well. And that's the reason I say the Christians are closer to us than the Jews. Even though there are many many of the things are in Sharia similar to that as the Jewish faith, but in terms of the prophets, the Christians are closer to us because they accept Jesus Christ as a Messiah. Yeah. Yeah. But, you, but like I said, Jesus Christ has the Father. So anyway, go and you know, you might have been told or informed by certain Christians about a certain narrow path. Like, like explore, even from your own faith, even from your own Bible. Try to research it. Okay? Because if you're just going to be fed um, everything in terms and not do our own research, then we can be duped into something which is not right. Yes. I want you ultimately to be saved on the day of judgment, to stand for the God and say, God, with all my heart and with all my ability, with my mind, I tried to do research, yes, and I came to the conclusion that this is the truth. Then you can then say to God Almighty on that day, that yes, I've done this. But if you're just going to listen to only one religion like Christianity instead of using your own sources yes instead of using your own mind and your abilities to do research with an open mind like for example I would suggest you go and research about Islam would you like to have a copy of the Quran if I gave you one no it's fine no, no problem but, but, still, but maybe in, when you're ready maybe so. yes but I really appreciate talking to you you've been a gentleman uh, nice. and uh, it was indeed an interesting yeah. Thank Thanks a lot. Appreciate your help. Okay. Brothers and sisters, Allahu Akbar. Thanks to your tremendous support. We have, Alhamdulillah, paid the final installment for this huge masjid property. And now we need your support to convert this 2,700 square meters building into the most amazing Islamic center in the country of Norway, inshallah. But bro. This does not look like a masjid. It looks like a wedding hall. And that's exactly what this is. Brothers and sisters, we need your support 
to reconstruct this wedding hall into a masjid and community center so we can have our prayer hall for us to establish salah five times a day an indoor playground for the kids to nurture love for the house of Allah a conference hall for lectures and reminders about Islam we need classrooms for education a library to study a gym for exercise and a soup kitchen to help the poor and needy if you support us even with a small sadaqa you will inshallah harvest a reward for all of these facilities and the khair that they generate throughout the years all the way until the day we meet Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever builds a masjid for the sake of Allah, Allah will build for him a similar house in Jannah. So what are you waiting for? Click the button to donate and share the video for extra rewards.